Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about Multiverse X and what some of our models are thinking about where it might be going next. So I'm going to start off here on Trading View, and what we can see is that really ever since you know more or less June, you know uh, Multiverse X has more or less been going sideways. You know, a slight downtrend we did dip down below, but more or less kind of going sideways. Now, interestingly enough, this box that you see here, this green box, is something I had drawn on this chart long time ago about a, you know, almost a year ago now it was back in this kind of general time frame when i drew this in there kind of identifying points where i thought likely support might show up and then indeed that actually seems to be roughly where eagle has found its at least current local bottom and right now we're kind of consolidating at the kind of top of that range bouncing off of it more or less here after having held it for support through this entire time who knows maybe we can start to chart a course back to the upside. But as I mentioned at the outset, I wanna talk more about what some of our models think about Eagle. And one of the things I wanted to mention going into this is that our models can give a pretty good idea of when different assets are maybe set to be able to rally versus not. And I think Joe did a really good job of illustrating this exactly in a newsletter that we put out on our website, polaritydigital.io. That's a site that we've launched in collaboration with Jay over at Daily Crypto Analysis. And in this particular issue, this is back on February 13th, Joe did a really interesting and in-depth overview of how you can use the different models that we have on the website, polaritydigital.io, which I'll show in a second, how you can use them in conjunction with each other, kind of looking at them to compare different assets, get a sense of which asset might be more or less likely to perform in a given point in time. And what's notable about this is this came out on February 13th um, this year. And uh, basically after Joe did his analysis, kind of looking through all the different um, assets that we have models for, kind of comparing them against each other, looking at the different models, what they were saying about the different assets, he came to the conclusion that Eagle was looking ready for a nice rally off of that point, that it was kind of set up across our models. The data was really pointing to it looking favorable. And if we just go back to the chart, what we'll see is that if you identify when February 13th was, it's right here. February 13th, and then you'll notice that off of that day, Eagle went ahead and did a about 32, 33% rally to the upside right after that point. So essentially what, I'm, what that, that gets at is that these models are useful. And I think Joe did a really great job in illustrating the ways that you can use them against each other to identify that Eagle looked quite favorable in that position. And then it ended up being a very astute call with that rally coming later. Now, obviously it's important to mention, nothing's ever guaranteed. So, you know, it wasn't that, you know, Eagle had to, that it was guaranteed to go on this rally, but more what it was saying is that the model said the conditions were there, that the conditions were most favorable for Eagle relative to a lot of the other assets that were following. And so if you thought that a move up was likely, Eagle was a great place to be looking for, for some nice catch up move movements. So Eagle really play catch up with the rest of the market and start putting in some better upside, which is exactly what it ended up going and doing. So that's something I wanted to mention kind of as context into then what we're gonna talk about in this video, or wanna talk more about some models in specific and what they're saying about Eagle. So I'm showing you the dashboard view of our website right now. So this is the kind of the main landing page. We're on the market analytics portion of it right here. And we have uh, basically support for a bunch of different assets on this. Now, uh, Eagle sits right here, you know, Multiverse X, Native Token Eagle sits right here. And then we have all the different models that we have here on the channel. We have live data for those put out in real time. So these are risk models, the upside downside potential indicator, momentum bias indicator, trend confidence indicator, and market direction classifier over here. Now, I'm not going to go into all of these, and we have videos, actually, links to videos. You can see them if you just look at the little information icon for each of these different models. So if you're curious of what each one does, go ahead and check that out if you're not already familiar. But I wanted to zero in on specifically the momentum bias indicator today because I think it gives some interesting information about what, where Eagle might be expected to go next in a more macro sense, more long-term. So, you know, uh, Joe did a really great job of kind of identifying this shorter term rally as being likely or very plausible for Eagle. I wanna talk more about the big picture now in this video. So let's go ahead and flip over to the um, momentum bias indicator, MBI. So if you're not familiar, this quantifies momentum in the market. So positive means positive momentum bias. That means that price or momentum is prevailing to the upside and that price tends to be pulled up along with it and pullbacks tend to be short-lived before moving back to the upside. 
Whereas if you're below zero, if you're down here in the negative, that's negative momentum bias. And that's when you can get these deeper corrections or these bear market kind of behavior when you're spending a lot more time in the green and the red than the green. And so I've talked about this before with the MBI, but I'll say it again. They're distinct patterns of behavior you'll identify that will signify more bull market behavior versus more bear market behavior. And what we've been seeing more recently from Eagled is textbook bear market behavior all the way through about this point here, really kind of into this point here. What we saw was a lot more time being spent in the red. I just attempt to reestablish positive momentum bias back over here, failure getting rejected back to the downside, and then a deeper correction going down to a, a new low for that bear market coming down here. Now we've been seeing since then, and really if we just go back to trading view, you know, ever since we've been kind of in this green band that I've identified here, and that even though you know Eagle set in a new low relative to June, more or less kind of if we look at this, it's kind of a consolidation pattern we're seeing, kind of more or less going sideways with just a decent amount of volatility throughout. So if we go back and look here, what we're seeing on the MBI is this interesting behavior we're not seeing ourselves going deeper and deeper into the reds with these corrections. You'll note that this um, going down to the local low back here in December, we actually set in a higher low than we did back here, suggesting that momentum to the downside is not as severe as it was back here. The momentum bias to the downside is weaker. And what we're actually seeing is this kind of behavior where we're slowly starting to kind of oscillate around zero. We're trying to, we're kind of testing zero a lot more frequently, being able to spend more time above zero than was the case back in the depths of the bear market where we only had this really this one time we got up there. And the reason this is important and why I bring it up is that this exact type of behavior, we're kind of oscillating around zero more or less, and especially what we've been doing more recently, this tends to happen in periods where you're transitioning out of bear markets and into more into bull markets or to more bullish points in the market. Now, Eagle is so young that we really don't have any other protracted bear markets to compare this to. But you look at Bitcoin, you look at Ethereum or any other asset that has had multiple uh, uh, bear markets and bull markets that it's been through, you'll see these behaviors show up over and over again. This exact kind of bear market behavior will show up and then this exact kind of behavior will show up in those transitionary periods out of bear markets into potential new bull markets. Now you can stay in this range for a long time. So this doesn't mean that we're about to just immediately go shoot off to the upside to some crazy mega rally. But what it does suggest is that it's possible that the worst of the bear market is now behind us. Not to say that the lows are necessarily in, but that the worst is possibly over. Now, again, for eGold being a part of the crypto market, which is a part of broader markets, a lot of this is gonna depend on what broader markets do. If we get a massive recession that crashes stock market, you know, all of this to some degree goes out the window potentially. You know, if you see the, the SP 500 fall down to, you know, another 20, 30%, you know, it's unreasonable to expect crypto to be unaffected by that. But short of those kind of very extreme things happening, which you know, really crypto hasn't really experienced yet. Short of those things happening, this is the exact kind of behavior you'd want to see to start getting more confident or think it's more plausible that the worst of the bear market is over and we're now in that accumulation zone that might lead into the next bull market. And so this would be a very much a bullish narrative that this continues to play out. So if we keep watching this, this indicator and we see that dips back down to the red, will roll over back to the up and you kind of see this oscillation around zero. That's just more and more evidence accruing that we've kind of seen the worst of the bear market we might be entering into that new accumulation phase. So something to keep an eye on for sure. And another model I wanted to, to, to talk about is actually not one that we have on the website right now. It's actually one that I'm still working to develop, but I wanted to show it because I think it's interesting to look at in this context. So I'm gonna put this up. This is a custom chart that I just put together here. So again, not available on the website, but once we're kind of, once I'm finished developing it and I feel confident, more confident about it, it's something that we probably will um, at some point add to the website to keep uh, a prize for updates about that. What this is, this is a model, I've I actually talked about this a while ago um, on the channel, but it's one I haven't talked about more recently. I've been working on, kind of on the background, developing, fleshing it out, kind of adding things to it. This is a model that tries to predict future returns and you can do it at different time frames. I'm showing you the six month, so basically 180 days, roughly six month future return prediction. And basically what it's doing is it's trying to uh, assess the probability that in six months from now, the market will be positive or negative, or that Eagle will be above or below the current price that it's at right now. So basically the way that you read this is that this probability over here is the probability that in 180 days, the market will be up. That's the way that you can read it. That in 180 days, the price of Eagle will be higher than it is right now. And then if you're below 50%, so basically if you're above 50%, that's saying that it's more likely than not 
from the model's perspective that the Eagle price will be above where it is today, whereas below 50%, 0.5, that's basically saying that there's a less than 50% than chance that it will be uh, up, that it'll actually be more, it could be down than up, and then just varying degrees. So basically, if you're really at the high points here, the market is quite, or the model is quite confident of positive returns in the next six months. If you're really far down, the model is very confident in, in negative returns, in not positive returns, basically. And so we just look at the behavior across time here, it does quite well. We can see this, right? You know, very bullish throughout this whole part of the market cycle, you know, really this whole bull run up through here, the market was very bullish, a little bit more undecided as we went through here, and then really just fell off a cliff, saying basically getting more and more confident of downside coming in the kind of, you know, six month projections that it had throughout this whole period down through here, which was correct. It absolutely nailed this. And I should know that this model is, is um, trained to only data up through around this point here. So this entire thing after that is all, all just completely with the model having no idea of what actually happened. It's just it's prediction based on the fit that it got up through this point. And so basically, if you've been looking at this model through here, you would have said, oh, you know, the likelihood of us finding a bottom here and going out to the upside is quite low because look at how confident the model is of further downside at this point. And indeed, that's exactly what we got coming down through here. Now, what's notable, and I think what's confluent with what we're seeing with the momentum bias indicator, MBI, is look at how this model is now growing in its confidence of upside in the coming six months. This kind of six month forecast is actually now up just below 80%, about 85 or about 75, 74% chance that it's giving currently of there being upside six months from now. Now it's important to obviously, you know, take this with a grain of salt in the sense that when you're looking at this, I don't think you should interpret it as saying literally from today, six months from now, there is an exactly 74% chance of upside. It's based on its current estimate. So basically if it had to project six months in the future, it's 75% confident that there's going to be upside relative to downside. It's basically saying that there's, there's quite a bit more likelihood of upside relative to downside. But, you, but it's, you know, it wouldn't be guaranteed that that would happen exactly six months from now. You know, maybe that would happen three months from now. Maybe that would happen five months. Maybe it would happen seven months. You know, that exact six month figure, you know, take it with a grain of salt, there's some leeway there. But what it is saying is that just generally speaking, when it's looking um, in the future, you know, using six months as its main reference point, but just generally speaking, its future outlook is quite bullish for Eagle. And this is not just Eagle, this is actually the, the entire crypto market, more or less, that I've looked at this model for. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. It's all been showing this general kind of behavior that as we went into that kind of final capitulation range to the end of last year, the model started to get a lot more bullish on a bunch of different assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, Eagle along with the party. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. But obviously, you'd be much, you'd much rather see this, if you're hoping for upside with Eagle, you'd much rather see this than something like this, which is what we saw back here before this really nasty downturn that the market saw. And so I just wanted to point this out as another data point that I think is interesting. Kind of give a sneak peek behind the scene at this model that I'm developing in the background. Again, this is not live on the website yet, but it is something that we're hoping to be able to add in the future. So keep apprised for updates about that. So really then to wrap us up, what I wanted to kind of mention is that, you know, Eagle has seen some pretty nasty drawdown in this bear market, especially if we just take it from the all time high, you know, we're down currently about 92%, absolutely brutal drawdown for Eagle. But the tone seems to be changing. And it's not just for Eagle, it's also the rest of the crypto market as well. That if history is any indication, if history is any predictor of the future to any degree, we're getting to a phase that looks like the worst of the bear market might be becoming behind us, that the worst might be over, and that maybe we're going to enter into more of an accumulation zone, which doesn't guarantee the absolute bottom is in. But what it might mean is that the, the worst of these brutal drawdowns are behind us. The worst of the pain might be behind us. And again, that's assuming that nothing absolutely catastrophic happens in broader markets. But if not, if history continues to be a guide, this is looking pretty hopeful. This is, this is definitely way more hopeful than it had been any time last year. Last year was very grim. I think the rays of hope are, are kind of here. And I know that a lot of people are still kind of traumatized by what we saw here. And that the idea of us moving to the upside seems quite unreasonable to a lot of people. And, you know, fair enough. We just experienced a lot of pain. But the data are telling us a different story. So I have to keep on watching it, kind of keeping, keep reevaluating that thesis, that hypothesis of upside coming. But as long as the data look like they're looking right now, you know, I think a bullish bias is actually reasonable. 
Now, that's not financial advice, obviously. You, know, you should look at these data, um, make your own opinions about these data that I presented. You know, look for yourself, look at other data that you think are important to monitor, come to your own conclusions. But that's what I'm seeing with these data that we have. So kind of to wrap us up then, if you want to take a look for yourself, go on over to PolarityDigital.io. Link is in the description. You can take a look at all the different models that we have here on the site um, for yourself. Look at historical, excuse me, historical chart as well as the real time. And also encourage you to just go back and look at this post um, back here from February that Joe made, because I think it does a really great job of breaking down different one of the different ways that you can use a bunch of those different indicators together to then gain insights like Joe very uh, astutely did about, in this case, Eagle being staged to go for a nice rally, which is exactly what it ended up doing in the subsequent days. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter, and go check out ClarityDigital.io to see the data for yourself.